our podcast has no oversight. So <laughs> if you hear anything from here, understand that there is no PR team. There is no fact checkers. God is. God is our only <laughs> oversight. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. I am Marge Simpson. Mo- oh, Hi. Hi. look at that. The hair, the hat. And this here is Frank looking good, looking a little frat boy. Oh, boy. No, that's stereotypical. That's a stereotype. In what way? A regular person. Well, what's the difference of a, of a fashion grouping and a stereotype? Because I just went to a 90s party. Okay. And you were wearing 90s type things. Mm-hmm. Grungy things. Mm-hmm. Is that a stereotype? I don't know. Can you call a goth a goth without you stereotyping? I don't know. This isn't March Simpson hair. This is a beautiful handmade hat. That you got from the Lehigh Valley Textile and Fiber Club. <laughs> is that what it says? No. no, it's just the Lehigh Valley Fiber Festival. That you went to on Saturday. That I went to in McCungy. I think that's how you say it. McCungy. McCungy? Pennsylvania. Is probably a Native American. Maybe. Um, this is handmade. Um, and guess what? It's big. You know how we always talk about hard yeah. to find big hats. Big heads. With lack of big hats. <laughs> and um, so. I've never seen a blue sheep though. So that's cool. Well, you can dye wool. <laughs> You can dye wool. This is made with, I have it right here. Um, so this is a blend. It's okay. not just wool. This action. is um, alpaca. Oh. Merino. Oh. And um, acrylic. Oh. <laughs> acrylic is, is, is man-made. But, so there's, um, no, there's no sheep. I think merino is a sheep, isn't uh, it? A type of sheep. Yeah. I don't think it's goat. No, a goat is the other one. Um, that's um, that's uh, mohair. What? Mohair, I believe. But also, isn't um, cashmere from the cashmere goat? Yes. Th- listen, so these fiber festivals, I went to one. So I went to this. Um, fire, instead what? of fire fest, it's fiber fest? No, last, last September, <laughs> last Sunday. Um, and uh, it's so interesting. And they they have um, they have wool, wool from different sheeps. Sheep uh, types or give different kinds of wool. Okay. And yes, they can dye it. They can dye it. Bright, vibrant, man-made colors, or they can dye it natural colors. Uh, not not natural colors with natural, yeah, coloring. Wait, coloring. Um, but they had, and you can always like feel it because a lot of so the fiber festival they do have um, made stuff like this, but that's more of a craft festival. Mm. The fiber festival is is for people the who actual, make crafts. The actual raw material, right? So you you go and you get. The wool, so you can make the sweaters and, oh, okay. and stuff like this, and so and they have you can feel it because you you want to pick yeah. And they had, um, like you just talked about, they had different types of um, sheep, different types of goat, alpaca, rabbit, Ooh. cat, cat. No, swear to God, I should have taken a picture. Ew, cat. They just like comb it. I assume like comb it out. I think they shave them. No, they they must comb it out. Yeah. Um. And so you get um, a bundle of hair. Yeah. And so you would think, because like you would think like what each each single cat for, yeah. no, as long as it can bundle, because it, it would be it would be a certain type of cat, not the American short hair. Yeah. Probably like an Angora or something. Yeah, fluffy boy. Yeah. And, um, so it makes like a lump and then you kind of like, um, on a spinning wheel, you take the pieces which are staying together, but then you're spinning them tight. Ah. Oh. Spinning them tight. And yeah. um, I remember when we had a Newfoundland dog. Someone told me that you can make Newfoundland sweater, uh, New, Newfoundland fur sweater. Gross. Because they shed so much, it's, and it's such you, a fluffy, soft fur. Yeah, I guess you say gross, but is that what's the difference of a sheep? You know? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, you were a little disappointed because there was no sheep. I was sad because there wasn't a sheep at this one because the Jersey, New Jersey one, had the sheep there. Yeah. This was the Pennsylvania one, and they did not have the sheep there. They just had the, the wool. But I bought some stuff, including my hat. Do they need a shout out? Uh, McCungie Studios, I think. Shout out McCungie Studios and all of your alpaca products. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that was that was Sunday, and today is Wednesday, Wednesday, September 28th. Yes. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for being here. 
And it is poke day. Pokey? Poke. Poke day. Can you spell poke? P o k e. Pokey. Like it pokey is bowls? pronounced poke. Po- poke Look, bowls. Poke. Yeah, poke bowls. Poke bowls. Not poke balls. That's Pokemon. <laughs> um, I don't like it. I think it's disgusting. You tried it? Wait, do you like sushi? Yeah. I heard it's a deconstructed sushi. It is. I'm going to tell you why I don't like it. Today went, is the inter not the national. It's the international day well, of poke. You know what? Well, poke, poke. can poke. can go poke off. I like sushi, kind of. Yeah, a little caveat. It's a lot. It's raw fish. You know, I'd never really been a seafood person, mm-hmm. but then I found sushi. I'm like, oh, I like this because it's like each roll is like small and delicate and nice. I have a problem with textures. Okay. And so what this is is deconstructed. You get a bowl. Maybe like you get like a bait. Like think of Chipotle. Okay. But then you order like sushi stuff. Okay. So rice and then you get avocado and rice then, vegetable rice fish vegetables. Yeah, uh, like avocado, the fish, the main like protein, and um. Is avocado they, a vegetable? I don't know. Seems like a fruit. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Whatever. It's a, a fat, carrot actually. or something. I don't know. Um. But then you eat it. But my problem is, but like, there's so it's, it's not uh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> but there's sauce. So, there's it. there's you can put there's sauce, I believe. Yeah, and yeah. pepper maybe. Yeah, imagine just like I don't know, deconstruct sushi. Yeah. My problem with it is, for me, one of the nice things about sushi is because you're eating this delicate raw stuff. It's nice that it's little dainty pieces. Okay. So you get a small little. You don't piece. want a big cold bowl of rice. It's cold, right? Yeah, it's cold. It's cold? It, it, more of the rice is actually the, the finest part. My thing is just when you're getting wet, slimy sushi, like raw fish, you don't want a fork. I'm not against it. You know, a lot of people aren't. Like I, I, I am, I am. It's obviously in business as an international day. People love it. Yeah. I'm saying for me, I think because I'm already on the edge with sushi, like yeah. sushi is like that's that's already crazy for right, me. Right, right. And because I don't even like you know I think it's called sashimi mm-hmm. when. They have like the piece of raw fish on top of okay, the roll. Okay, yeah. It's too much. It's like, ugh, okay. that's a lot of texture for me. So this is just like kind of like a bowl of, I just want to like almost like throw it on a, throw it on a, uh, a skillet and it's like. Like you're stir, at a stir fry it. Um, yeah, well, I see here that, it, that, you know, it says you can have the marinated fish, which acid cooks raw fish. So if you, if you have like an acid, like a, a vinegar on your tuna or salmon, if you marinate it long enough, it, it cooks it as if it was on the stove. Did you know that? No. Yeah. Uh, if you take a piece of, um, like, I think I've had tuna. But it's super, super thin, first of all. Yeah. And and um, you see what it looks like completely raw. And then they have, like, this little tiny dish. You know, like, even in Italian restaurants, it's, like, oil and seasoning? Yeah, yeah. It's like that, but it's the vinegar. And when you put this tiny little filet in there, you see it change color. The oh. acid actually cooks it. Ew. Cooks it. It's still cold. No thanks. All right. You know what else cooks fish? Well, a <laughs> <Fire>. skillet. <laughs> Fire. That's what uh, I'll stick with. Poke, poke means to slice or cut in Hawaiian. Yeah, it, it, that, that's the other thing. It, it was yeah. de- it, like definitely had more of a. I think even like you get pineapple stuff. Right. Definitely more of like a Polynesian. Yeah. V- it was like a Polynesian. You like Hawaiian food? No, like I don't a like poo-poo pineapple. platter. I don't know what that is, but is there pineapple in it? I don't know. I, I just, I just imagine anything, It's the most famous thing I've heard. Poo poo platter. Anything Hawaiian revolves around pineapple. I, I guess yeah, it's a little too sweet for me. Like I don't like sweet. No. And they're that they like island like fruits incorporated yeah. in your yeah. meal. I'm more like give me. Well, they also have the big like the pork. Yeah, roast the, uh, pork. the you whole probably, the whole pig. You probably would like that. The the spit roast pig. Yeah, a beach a beach. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the biggest pork guy. Right there in the Bible, it says you know cloven hooves. Right. Cloven hooves, which we learned also carry hoof and hoof and mouth disease. Hoof and mouth disease. So how is your not hoof and mouth, but hand and hoof and mouth? Hand and, <laughs> hand, hoof and mouth. Hand and foot and mouth. I'm convinced I had it. Okay. So because someone else had it actually really? di- diagnosed. Really? Um so hand, foot, and mouth. For any of you with kids probably have heard that before. Um mostly kids get I think chicken pox. Okay. Not in the sense of how severe it is, but in the sense of like Kids get it. Adults rarely get it. And they're expected to live through it. And, and once you get it, it yeah. I don't think you can get it again. Um, but the, uh, like you, how you can like tell someone has it, a kid has it, is they'll have 
a bunch of red dots on their hands, right. feet, and mouth. The red dots aren't like itchy or right. Or no, but they painful. do have fever and unhappiness, right? Well, that's what I'm yeah, saying. But, okay. but those are a physical showing, and then you're sick. Like you, okay. With adults, it shows up differently. Um, a lot of times, it's misconstrued for strep throat. Like that'll okay. be all. So imagine strep throat. And so the other day, I was in school. I'm like, I think I have a handful of mouth. And um, went to the doctor. The doctor's like, I don't know what it is. Um, you tested negative for strep throat, but I think it's strep throat. And I'm like, could it be hand, foot, and mouth? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, then, yeah, I now I'm pretty certain I had it. So go kids. Go the, 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 kids. Go. Go away from me. <laughs> Depends on how you put. Um, uh, like, now, like in the beginning, I was like so just open to the kids like breathing on me and stuff. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, do not even cough near me because I've been sick twice in one month. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to get my flu shot. Everyone right. go out and get your flu shot. Yeah. You get your flu shot? Yeah. In America, you can just walk into any pharmacy. Um, anywhere. I saw like a, uh, anywhere. a a pizza shop. Just Liar. Yeah. It's like pizza. pizza You're lying right now. Stop yeah. it. But no. And the, the, actually, there's a place called uh, Poke Bowls. Is that it? Like a, a, a Poke. And it's. They have a, a, a special. Do they? That's pokey and a and a and a pokey. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> poke and poke. They should do that. Po- poke, pokey and poke. Um, but you're right. The supermarket, I believe. Well, they have the pharmacy. Yeah, there. they have a little pharmacy. Um, yeah, it's our pharmacies are extremely accessible in America. In other countries, um, I think they're more they're more uh, hands off. I'm the pharmacist. What do you want? Yeah. But, but here, give, give it's and just, take. Also, it's, here we have a terrible healthcare system. No, we don't. Do we? Yes. I don't think so. What? We get robbed, and people can't afford to get life. You are the biggest anti health American health system. We can't afford it, and yeah. I want universal health care for all. But I think we have a great health care system. Oh well, yeah, that's so what I meant. What, what am I thinking of? We have a flawed healthcare system. Yeah, like the the actual. What's what's the point of having it if people can't have access to it? Is that what you, that's maybe what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, like, mm-hmm. yeah, we have we have we have. If you get sick, if a rich person gets sick anywhere, they'll want to get sick in America, right? Or people but, travel here, yeah. But as far as accessibility, no, it's true. I just saw a post on Instagram. Um, I think it's called Our Revolution, which is the account. Our Revolution. Our or letter R. R for revolution. It was R us. Um, and it said, I, was it a hundred people? That sounds high, but I can't remember. But it was supposed to be a feel good story, I believe. I just read the headline, and it said these people were totally surprised. I guess there was like a donation, or there was something that these people who who otherwise wouldn't have gotten these operations were able to get it because of like money that had come in. They otherwise wouldn't have been able to afford it. So it's supposed to be like a feel good story, but I was like, what the F. Yeah. Like, well, are you like you're a lottery now to get? Yeah. And you always talk about that about how it's all you. Don't, you almost don't like when there's a feel good stories about GoFundMe's or this, where it's like, why are we cheersing us citizens? This for huge deficiency, right? When, when we should be yelling at the government that we shouldn't even have to be starting GoFundMe's right. for old Aunt Carol, right? Or young little Billy, or young little Billy. Or middle... Middle student. child Millie. <laughs> middle child Millie. We'll make Dr. Seuss all all, all week. Icing on me. <laughs> I, I, um, you know, Domino's, I, I was eating the cinnamon um, sticks. I don't, they changed them. Domino's. Domino's. Yeah, I, know, I think I remember. I can't have it because it's wheat. They used to have but, like, it was like a big thing and then you'd like rip off the sticks. Yeah, it was like a um, half moon sort of. Yeah. And then it was... Like perforated, perforated. Yeah, now they have like like individual like uh, I think cancer like ribbons. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. But it's like annoying because like I don't want that much knot. You know what I mean? Like yeah, so it's more like it looked like garlic knots. It's um, yeah. They probably just saved. It probably is the garlic knots. Oh, so they, I think they, they streamlined it and it's like. Where are they? I forgot. They get bread and they'll either put cinnamon on it or. I just forgot. I did not go to the Lehigh Valley Fiber Festival on Saturday. I, on Sunday, I went on Saturday because on Sunday is when I went to the church tour, which is on, on this channel. Oh, yeah. Check out that video. Yeah. You went a, on a church. A short. A stained glass church tour. Yeah. Oh, no. A church tour of the church's stained glass for their 100th year 
Jubilee. Yeah. So he kind of um, advertised it a little bit misleadingly. This, okay. This priest. Because um, that's how he kind of sold it, that it was going to be telling us about the stained glass. It turned out that it was more of a church tour. Okay. With... A, there was stained a, glass <laughs> there. With a stop at the stained glasses. But it was a literal tour. Like, this is where the first... Like, this is... Because, um, you know, the most buildings, if they're, like, old, they've, they've advanced over the years. Like, this is where they first had the baptismal font. And this is yeah. where, you know... And this is when... At this time, this is when we got that statue. Yeah. So they walked us through the whole church, pointing out different um, interesting things. Look at this. Look at that. And um, they did point out the stained glass. Now, I hope they're not watching. But because, like, literally, he just read to us what the stained glass said. Yeah. And I can read. Everyone could read there. And so... Also, he was just given a, he was just talking about the story that the stained glass was depicting. Yes. So that's not even a stained glass tour. It wasn't. He pointed at the stained glass. And and as, a, as a stained glass major. Yes. There's so much to be talked about about the stained glass. There really is. People even asked him like, oh, is there lead in that? And he's like, I guess so. It's old. <laughs> it was like, what? <laughs> but, but I still loved it. Um, I have been going to catholic churches since i was born before i was born um my mom was pregnant in a church i'm sure okay okay so my whole entire life but i still was either i learned things and i forgot which i've said that many times on this podcast or i learned things for the first time one of which is that every priest owns his own chalice Whoa. yeah did you know that like who gives it to him well that's the thing this priest, when they were saying like, oh, this is the chalice and this is the cloak and stole and this and this. And he says, oh, right. And this is my my chalice. And he said, um, he turned it over. He said, when I was ordained, my parents gave this to me. He showed it was good job, Billy. Love mom and dad, whatever they wrote. Like, but are you sure everyone gets their own? Because what if they didn't have parents? Right. And and he, he showed us what he chose to get inscripted on it. He also chose... He got a stone from Bethlehem, like, yeah. from where, and he had it in, the, and he came around, showed everybody. So then I said, what you just said, I said, does every priest get their own chalice? He said, every pre, mostly every priest does have his own chalice. Um, you either get it as a gift when you're ordained, or a retiring priest sometimes gives people who don't have one uh -huh. his, or ch churches do have some on hand, maybe for like a visiting priest or for whatever but chances are even the poorest priest maybe they would ask the parish like yeah. would you like to donate but you have the right to a chalice if you cannot afford a chalice <laughs> one will be provided yeah, for you exactly and then i was thinking of it like that does make sense because who people don't generally like to drink out of other people's cups yeah well i mean like it, in the office you have your coffee cup you know but also no because like old catholic churches that, that's exactly what you would do they would everyone would drink the wine well you i think they still might you mean we'll share with the congregation yeah, but I don't think that would be from the priest's chalice. That would be from, like, the everybody chalice. Yeah, I don't know. Really? I don't know, but I found that out. And um, also, I found out. Are we... I, it's not, yeah, it's just, it, this is going to be titled, You and Verona Found Out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, My name lot. is Marge. Marge Simpson found out. My name is Marge. One more thing, and it was... I feel like I'm, like, lingo. I know, every, I know. Like, I found if, out. If you go to an older <laughs> church, they're going to have an altar rail... Which kind of is like a little fence that doesn't let you get up on the altar. Yeah. That is for when we used to get communion, you would kneel at the altar and get your communion, which of course nobody does anymore. You walk, you remain, please remain standing and you just make your, yeah. and you make your turn. That's it. All right. Today's wet. Today's day. Hey today's guys, word. this is one word Wednesday. Um, You know what we do. We pick a word. We talk about it. That's it. There's nothing else to think about. No. So it's the word is oversight. Oversight. It's it's one word. It's a compound word, I guess. Oversight. Uh, oversight. That's like when someone look, watches over something. Yeah. Like lack of oversight. Right. Means like your employees are just running amok. Yeah. Oversight should be um, something you have in place in your organization that you have oversight. So it's not just everybody doing their own thing or it's not just me telling people to do things my way. If you have an organization, I guess that's big enough, 
you want to have an oversight committee, government, police, religions, like um, yeah. big religions, uh, the oversight committee will be looking at everything so that one person is not making all the cards fall. Okay. And um, so the word is oversight in um, in Philadelphia. I don't know if in every place, but in Philadelphia, you, there is a um, for the for the for the police, uh, a citizens police oversight committee because the police mm. have been no people have frowned upon uh, internal affairs. Yeah. And um, and in the same kind of vein, since we're a religious, we're a, we're a spiritual channel, you have the internal affairs of the Catholic Church forming their oversight. But are you crying? Are you cr- is this upsetting you? <laughs> I just love internal affairs. But regardless of what you think of certain people's oversight committees, I am here to say what is much worse is no oversight at all. Who would argue with that? Um <laughs> who would say if there's like too much oversight like no i'm brother. saying i'm saying you work for somebody who who there's no oversight and oh, yeah. and the problem is when you are used to there being oversight in certain industries okay you believe there's oversight everywhere so right we we're used we, we think the fda in america you know there's yes. oversight on food so you think there's oversight on amusement parks but there's actually not. So when you go to that little fair on the corner, you might fly off into the distance on the salt and pepper shaker. There's no oversight committee on this. So like the Catholic Church, I'm sure um, Jewish synagogues, Muslim mosques, they usually have an oversight committee so you don't have rogue people yes. um, running amok. But, but there are times that single people act as a larger organization. So the 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 um you weren't lied to yeah but they did not tell you i'm not part of the type of people who have oversight oh yeah 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 definitely people can you can be tricked into thinking that a place has oversight and then in reality there is none and right. this person is a one-man show it's funny kind of last week uh wednesday one wednesday we talked about um positions of power right and this is sort of like the opposite because we were saying like the good thing about like having power as an entity or a group and this is sort of saying the drawbacks is when you have one person who's in charge there can be a lack of oversight right which means you can run amok in that position of power and yeah i mean definitely particularly when it is the worst is when you're lied to about the oversight right and that that has happened enough almost like where you see oversight it's because there was a lack of oversight right like when you see where did you say there's oversight committees in the police why because there was a lack of oversight right. and there was a lot of turn of heads shenanigans going on and then they're like okay there's not enough oversight here we need it right catholic churches we I mean we're just you know catholic churches is the most well known one of the biggest problems was the lack of oversight right. and all the stuff that happened and now we jumped on it but just like we always talk about we are not finished evolving. Like, yeah. anytime someone thinks that, like, oh, yeah, I remember when there wasn't any oversight? It's like, yeah, we we <laughs> figured it out here and here. There's still so many other places that are like that now. Yes. And they haven't yet had a big enough scandal to get the proper oversight. Um, Yeah, and, and I think you get lulled into a feeling of security. Yeah. Because... Um, you just assume that, you know, um, take our neighboring uh, community where we live. They have a police department. And I assumed that they had an oversight from Pennsylvania. Yeah. Which oversees police departments. Come to find out that they're actually considered a security department. and They don't have oversight. Their oversight is the taxpayers of that little community. So um, it's it's always always buyer beware sort of situation always don't assume and do due diligence do your homework um what i was really focusing on because once again we're spiritual channel and i just talked about my catholic 
my Catholic church uh, tour that I took this this Sunday, everyone is aware that the oversight of the Catholic church and how they didn't do a good job. They didn't do a good enough job. And they, they published the huge reports of all the uh, priests that were laicized, um, turned into people who aren't priests. Yeah. And people were outraged at the Catholic church and they were... But I, I, I'm, I'm guessing they were a little bit happy, right? Because some of the some of the pipers had to pay, and there was a lot of uh, attention brought to it. Yeah. Okay. So the problem we have now is it, this is an old article. It was from 2019, but it's the Associated Press, and they did an article, and they did a research about all the priests that we know of that were kicked out because they were kicked out of the Catholic Church because they were defrocked. That's all. They are yeah. out there in the world. Yeah. And they are working with children. They are working um, around uh, vulnerable groups. And there is no oversight anymore because the this committee kicked them out. Yeah. So you have to be really, really cautious. Okay. Um, and also this article talked about there are lists of names of people, of priests, who did not do what they should have done in the church and they were kicked out. But did you know that there's a secret hidden not confidential list of priests that were also let go, but it was never publicly tar- found out? Yeah. Oh. Who has that list? They have it, but they don't have to bring it forth because they were never th- there was There's no legal obligation to There was rumors, there was, no- there was list the, the 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 oversight, I guess their oversight committee was keeping track of it. Yeah. Because they were like, this looks a little, sh- you know, sus. And like, and like, we don't want them back, but we also <laughs> right. not going to get them arrested. We don't want them back, but they're free to go. So don't lean on a false confidence that everything out there has oversight. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think that's an important thing to remember. It's that, you know, you need to be looking out for yourself. You can't, you can't expect everything. You know, you can't expect... Just because, yeah, like you said, you're in America and you trust that you buy food, it's not going to be expired. Right. And that you know that it was it was made in a factory that's healthy or the medicine you take is, you know, the correct dosage. Right. All of these now, things that have oversight. And then right. there are places yeah, that... Yeah, medicine probably has a lot of oversight. There are places that you'll walk in like, you know, there's a school or something or a, like a church and there isn't that same oversight and you are, you are trusting it. Right. Just as much. Yeah, you just brought up, I didn't even think of that, healthcare. So if you went to a big hospital, you know, you yeah. would be feeling pretty comfortable that you wouldn't have to investigate everything because they have oversight. Yeah. You know, but then there could be a little, you know, a standalone place, a, a surgery center that opens up and they give cheaper uh, yeah. nose jobs or whatever. And you might assume, well, there has to be, you know. But but how do you not? I know such short time because I talk too much about my my weekend and my sheep. How do you not become a Karen? How do you not become OCD? Like, what are you supposed to do? Investigate? Like, you need to check to see if your water has lead in it. You need to check if the teacher is authorized. You need to check if your doctor has ever had malpractice. Like, how do you be careful but also not nuts? I think I, mean, I think it's a case by case scenario. I think definitely just it's sort of like the American problem because in other countries you do sort of know the lack of oversight for a lot of things. So you're more cautious to begin with. And so you know you need to navigate your world. But in America, we're given everything. Like in other countries, you have you understand there's no food regulations. You know that like there's no this, that, or whatever. Right. And so you act with a reasonable caution. Reasonable. Right. Not 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 reasonable. But I think in America, we need to remind ourselves that we aren't in a utopia. Yes, we should be thankful, you know, like about our amazing healthcare system, (laughs) Um, (laughs) since you love it so much. (laughs) But the fact that just because a lot of things are done well doesn't mean everything is. And have that, have have that mindfulness. Uh, Yeah, and I, I, I'm guessing also you'd prioritize, right? Like, yeah. You know, if your children were involved, yeah, probably want to be more exactly, you know, like, or big operation like we just talked about, you know. Yeah, and and just I always say, like, just learn from, learn from the past, and and learn from like what to be cautious of. Like, I think there's a lot to learn about just you know with religion and 
the previous lack of oversight in the Catholic Church and listen to like learn the stories of yeah. what how the mothers felt about or the, how the mothers let the situation get to that. Right. And it's like, you know, prioritizing other people or, or letting getting lulled into the sense of but that's the church. They would never do that. Like don't be that per don't be that person again. You don't have to be a Karen, but don't repeat the mistakes that have caused so because much problems in the past. Those who do not learn from the past are doomed, doomed to repeat doomed, it. Doomed to repeat it. Um, that's it. Uh, yeah. So check out um, our podcast has no oversight. So <laughs> if you hear anything from here, understand that there is no PR team. There is no fact checkers. God is God is our only <laughs> oversight. As God is my witness. Um, thank you for coming. Goodbye. Peace. Love. Prosperity. And pokey, b- pokey and pokey bowls. bowls. <laughs>